Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Welcome to the uh, webinar about the uh, IFMA Global Project Excellence Award and IPMA Project Excellence Baseline. IFMA PEP stands for Project Excellence Baseline. And this is a standard that uh, we use for assessing projects and programs. This is a, uh, a model that has matured over many years of the awards system and because the examples that were used for creating this model were top projects behind the uh, excellence award. So today we're also using that standard not only to assess projects in companies, we're also using that standard to assess projects in global competitions, which will be covered later. We will now focus on the uh, on the main thing that uh, I guess most of you came here for, which is Project Excellence Baseline. Project Excellence Baseline is the latest addition to, uh, to IPMA standards, uh, standards group. However, it's a very much sure standard as such because the predecessor of this standard has been used as a closed model for many, many years as the main tool for Global Project Excellence Award that uh, with Anadipma for over 17 years now. And uh, the experience from those projects has been used to create the lens, we could say, through which you can look at how your project is managed. So uh, the, the way you could use it is actually uh, quite flexible. We see organizations that use IPMA PEP for collecting experience from past projects. So they do uh, we could say uh, post-mortem evaluation of, of past projects just to build the knowledge database that is organized as the standard. We see many organizations these days using IPMA PEP as at the definition stage. So you can already assess your project approach before you start your project, uh, just to make sure that you have all the ingredients that are necessary for the project success. We see companies that use a simplified excerpts of the model throughout the project for continuous improvement for example on the regular project retrospectives uh, let's say every month or a quarter we also saw some companies doing uh, this thing on the uh, project manager level so not only looking through the project itself but also looking at various projects that uh, a given project manager runs just to assess the performance of the manager in, in the same areas as we assess a single project we see also a lot of companies, and this is, I think, the most popular use to uh, to use the PEP at the closing retrospective, just to have a complete view on, on what just happened to learn for the future. And also some of these are coming back after the project sometime later when the benefits are visible to reassess the whole picture again. But uh, as you might see, the, the model can be used in various ways. Uh, you can uh, actually use it on also various levels, and uh, I'll come to that details later. And it's not only the award thing, it's the thing that you can uh, actually implement in your company. And just to remind you, you, you can do it free of charge. You don't have to uh, spend any money on it. We just encourage you to grab the model and then simply use it. So how the model looks like. We actually divided it into three parts. There was a lot of, uh, lot of thinking behind, and uh, I want to share a little bit of that background behind it. So when we created the model, uh, the team asked themselves a question, which is, so what, what do we really want to see in the project? Uh, so when you apply this model, what kind of phenomenon it should, it should assess? And we all agreed that what we want to assess is the project's potential to succeed. And in order for the project to succeed, we believe that the project should have three elements. And the first and the most important for that is what we call people and purpose. And uh, what people and purpose is, is basically that the right people and the, the good leadership, uh, they know what is the, the goal, they know what is the vision of the project. And uh, through that, they will, um, provide the uh, the foundation for excellence because they know exactly uh, what this project is about. They know exactly why they are there, and they will be encouraged by the leaders to 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 contribute to the project and actually to engage themselves. And we call this part a foundation for excellence because we believe that if this part is missing, um, the rest is not only difficult, but some in, in some cases or often, quite often in many cases it's impossible. The next area that we have in the model is what we call the processes and resources. And we look at it from a very interesting perspective because we actually took a lesson from Agile projects here. Uh, those of you who know Agile Manifesto, 
you probably know one of the key rules of the manifesto, which is uh, that uh, processes and uh, tools should uh, uh, actually be in, in uh, backing up people and interactions. So the rule is people and interac interactions over processes and, and tools. And this is exactly how we see it in InPath. And uh, that's why we call it reinforcement of excellence. So excellence starts with, with people knowing what, what they want from the project and, and being motivated to do it. And then we believe the tools, the processes, the resources should help them to achieve these goals. And if your processes and resources are not helping them, then there's something wrong with that. And uh, uh, that's why we only call it reinforcement. Uh, the, the processes and resources, as much important as they are, uh, we don't see them as a foundation. We see them as a thing that should be totally uh, aligned into the vision and the goals of the project and should help the project to, to achieve it. And of course, there comes the last area, which we, we call project results. And as you might see, the, the subtitle here is proof of excellence. And the reason we call it this way is because we believe, that, I mean, you can have the top motivated people. You can have people who know really what they want. You can have fantastic leadership. You can have the greatest processes on the planet. You can have the best tools on the planet. But if the project doesn't deliver, it doesn't make sense. So for us to, um, uh, to actually prove ultimately that uh, we, we do have excellence there, we want project to deliver. And you will see that we want it in a very special way. And uh, we'll get to details later, but I can already uh, give you a sneak peek that uh, here is not only the, the objectives that come, we will also look at satisfaction of stakeholders. And uh, this model is quite unique in that sense that we're not only looking at hard uh, results at, at the uh, numerical objectives, we basically want to see key stakeholders of the project happy with that. And uh, if that doesn't happen, we can't say that this was an excellent project. So just to summarize, you see, we, we need to see all these three ingredients together. Uh, we want to see uh, people developing uh, tools and processes to help them to achieve the objectives. We want to see leadership driven by the results, uh, and we want to see the results themselves. So let's have a look at the details, how the model looks inside. So the people and purpose side uh, part is divided into three elements. The first one is what we call leadership and values. And uh, here we look basically at the attitude of leaders. So if you if you look at the, the, the three sub criteria here, they are really about the attitude. Uh, so we're talking about leaders being role models for excellence. So that they are not only expecting excellence from everybody around, but that they actually themselves uh, walk the talk and they give the examples to others. They develop themselves. They are reflective on the way they practice their management. Um, they encourage others to learn and they build environment when it's, where it's possible. Uh, second thing in leadership and values is uh, that they actually do care about stakeholders. So what we wanted to balance out here is a very popular attitude that we see, especially in, uh, in, in the Western world, where uh, the uh, basically the, the financial or the time results of the project quite often are primary and stakeholders don't really matter. So uh, the projects that go over the dead bodies just to achieve the results, we don't want to see that. We want the leadership genuinely care about stakeholders such as project team, stakeholders such as neighbors, if that's a construction project, uh, stakeholders such as other departments, if that's an internal project in a company, um, uh, stakeholders such as customer, et cetera. And we want to really see the, the, the genuine care here. And the last part of the leadership and values is that we really see the leaders uh, focusing on reaching the objectives, but also adaptable to change. So if I can give you a little bit of a, of a let's say, kitchen talk we had when we created the model, we had a long discussion. Uh, should we have two separate criteria, like separately orientation to, towards objectives and separately adaptation to change? And uh, after a long deliberation, we decided, no, we want to see those two in one criteria because good project manager for us is both. We don't want to encourage any of these in separation because you can only reach the right objectives if you're adapting to the changing reality. 
and your adaptability to change is only making sense if it's driven by objectives that you want to achieve later so you don't end up somewhere in the forest in the in the very unknown place with your project so that's leadership and values as you see this is very attitudinal this is very much about uh, the attitude of leaders uh, second one is objective and strategy and uh, here we look at three things one is the the way project uh, works with stakeholders so here we look much more technically on how the uh, requirements are collected how stakeholders are engaged in the project itself uh, how the expectations are being managed and how these are are turned later into what the project delivers in the second sub criteria here we we look how the project develops the objectives is it only a one side decision where the project simply decides, okay, we're, we're gonna go that way without looking at the other stakeholders, like for example, the business partners, or is it the process where the project really uh, really encourages stakeholders to participate and, uh, and uh, make sure that the objectives are defined in a mature cooperative way. And the last part of it is something that we're quite proud of because we've noticed that most of the methodologies that we have today on the market, they skip very important step of the project um, uh, initiation, which is thinking about the overall strategy for project delivery. Uh, if you look at most of the management standards these days, they, uh, they have a project charter or its equivalent and they immediately jump into planning or even straight to execution while what we've seen in those projects that were super successful in the awards system all of these projects took a moment just to reflect what would be the best way to manage it so um, what we want to see here that is that they don't just pick any methodology out of the shell and they think like okay so we're it company we should go totally agile because this is fashionable these days or we're a construction company so we should take our traditional model a to Z and just implement it, but we want them to, to look at the entire thing and uh, think through what's our overall approach? What would be the best approach in this very given project situation? And what kind of methods would, would fit it best and, uh, and uh, how we should adapt them? So this is objectives and strategy. And the last part is project team partners and suppliers. And what we do here is we look at again, three elements. Uh, first of all, we look at identification and development of competences. And you can already see it doesn't say competences of a project team. We're looking competences overall. Why? Because we discovered that if you have incompetence, for example, partners or suppliers, and you don't do anything about it, your project is equally uh, distinct to fail as if you had incompetent team members. So what we want to see here is that the uh, project or program manager really uh, knows the full picture about the competences uh, and, uh, and uh, the development stage of all the project participants and makes sure that all these uh, where you need certain development, uh, all these needs are addressed and uh, actually moved forward. Second thing is we look at recognition of achievements and empowerment. And again, we wanna see it across the entire landscape. We promote very heavily what we call a one team approach. So it doesn't matter if that's your subcontractor or is it your customer or is it somebody from your core team? We want all these people to feel like uh, part of one team and we want their achievements to be equally seen. So if uh, you have super talented people, for example, that work as subcontractors for you, they should deserve the same recognition as the people who work in your team. And we wanna see that uh, a little bit in the, in the project as well. So this is more or less the philosophy that stands behind this this chapter the last one is uh, finally collaboration and communication and uh, the, the the model promotes very engaging form of that so uh, we're very much into integrating teams we're very much into uh, creating the environments where teams actually have the means to collaborate so they have the right processes they have the right tools uh, they have the right space to do so and somebody is consciously uh, thinking about that so this is, you see, the uh, what we call the foundations. And uh, we believe that if you remove any of these elements, it will be very difficult to achieve excellence in, in, in projects. The next part is what we call uh, processes and resources. And uh, if you remember, I already called it before, that is a reinforcement for excellence. So for us, this part is 
only making sense if it supports project objectives. Um, if you look at the philosophy here, we are very different from uh, what you will find, for example, in maturity models, because most maturity models, they focus on implementing certain practices, quite often not even thinking if these practices are useful for the organization or, or not. What we do here is we look at not what practices you implemented. So we will not judge if, I don't know, if you have a, I don't know, a backlog instead of WBS, is it better or worse? What we're interested in is to what extent these practices support the team in reaching the objectives. This is the most important thing here. So if your project have uh, modified well-known methodologies or invented something on its own uh, to satisfy the, the, uh, the need of the team to deliver, we're super happy to see that picture, actually. We're, uh, uh, we're very much promoting innovation in this field. And we're very much promoting adaptation that helps to achieve project objectives. And we look at those processes and resources in two dimensions. One is project management, and uh, another one is other key processes. Uh, let me explain you the, 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 the B2 part, the other processes, because I guess project management is quite obvious what is behind. Uh, by other key processes, we mean everything else that is needed for the project to succeed. Just to give you an example, I myself, I come from the software industry, and I firmly believe that if you want to succeed in your project, you not only have to ensure proper management processes, but you need to have the proper engineering processes in place. If you don't have engineering processes in place and your engineering is, uh, is not working properly, you won't achieve the, uh, the success in this field. Or if you're in, in a banking industry, for example, one of the key processes for you would be uh, recognizing the compliance and dealing with compliance. Because if you don't manage that part, then no matter how good project manager you are, your solution will not be allowed to be even used on the market because it, it won't meet the, uh, the, uh, the requirements of the, of the law. Or if you're in construction business, you uh, not only you have to deal with processes such as the construction process itself, but also things such as health and safety, or uh, uh, I don't know, for example, the, the side logistics, which also in our thinking fall uh, into other key processes. So we want the project to, uh, to realize which of these processes are key to them, we want the project to, um, to understand why these processes are important, and we want projects to actively you know, develop and implement those processes. We want them also to, to continuously improve them. And uh, this brings us to to very interesting part, which is the, uh, the PDCA. When we assess the first two areas, so people and, and purpose and the processes and resources, we actually use the good old Deming cycle plan, do, check, act to do the assessment. So frankly, for us, uh, we don't care how the project started. Uh, project could have started really badly, but if the project had a lot of self-reflection and uh, across the course of the project, it learned how to do things right, the model will actually uh, emphasize it and will give extra score for that. On the contrary, if you just started the project completely unconsciously selecting a method that just happened to work, and you kind of succeeded despite your lack of uh, reflectiveness and despite your lack of effort to, to manage the project well, the model will also recognize it as uh, and, and give you very low scores for that. Because what we want to promote is conscious uh, management. What we want to promote is a management where you look at your practices, you reflect on them, uh, you're really taking conclusions on, on your reflection and you put them into action. And you don't put them into action in, in the project to come later. We don't care if you, I mean, we do care if you improve the future projects, but what we care most is that did this project that we assess, did this project already benefited from its own learnings? Um, the model promotes the continuous learning and continuous improvement approach where projects are looking into themselves, where projects are uh, constantly analyzing how they work themselves and apply the lessons they take into their own actions in the first place. And only in the second place, they share it with, with others. 
The last part of the model that we call the proof of excellence is, is project results. And uh, you will see that we have a very specific way of looking at the results. Um, if you look at C1, C2, and C3 criteria, they are all about satisfaction. We look at satisfaction of the customer, we look at the satisfaction of the project team, and we look at other stakeholders. Well, the order is quite often a very wide range of, uh, of stakeholders here. Uh, quite often, uh, the, the order is, is, uh, is dozens of different types of stakeholders, depending on the project. And we believe that the project can be concluded to be excellent only if the stakeholders leave the stage satisfied with it. So we don't want to promote projects that maybe delivered what they were supposed to deliver, but uh, the customer doesn't want to see the supplier anymore. The team uh, is, for example, burned out after the, uh, the execution. And other stakeholders, they are in courts, for example, demanding their rights because the project didn't look at them. We want projects uh, to be called excellent, where the customer wants to work with you again and is, is super happy with not only what you delivered, but also how you delivered that. We want to promote projects where the team says, I want to be in a similar project again. This has been an experience of my life and I'm only looking forward for the next one. We look at the projects who engage their other stakeholders in a way that actually they feel they got something out of it, not only in terms of, for example, financial contribution, but also in terms of their own development, in terms of innovation that the project brought to their companies, etc. This is what we call excellence. We, we want projects to leave a legacy that stays with the, its, its stakeholders. But of course, we still have C4, which is more, let's say, KPI-oriented criteria, where first of all, we look at the objectives. We want to make sure that the project delivered what it promised. Then, uh, of course, uh, if the project realized along the way that uh, what it promised is the best thing, we also want it to adjust. But at the end of the day, it should deliver what is best to realize the business case it's been started for. Uh, we also want to see what you see in C4B. We want to see the project to deliver something more. Uh, and uh, we, we got a, like hundreds of examples from projects all across the planet where the projects not only delivered the best deliverables they promised, but they also, for example, established a benchmark in a company. They brought awards to the company. They brought new business because of the way they, they were managed. They developed the company or the organization so much that they are now uh, in a completely different place on the market. Uh, they developed something that the community of practitioners, for example, uh, found out to be super useful for the entire profession. So we're also looking for those extras here. And last but not least, the last criteria in the model is the project performance. We want projects to deliver that in the most efficient way. So we want projects to last exactly as long as they should, but no longer. We want them to consume only that amount of finances they should, but no more. Uh, we want them to also uh, have the lowest possible toll on things such as human health or the environment. So in, in project performance, uh, maybe it will be surprising to some of you, but in project performance, we also look at the impact on environment uh, because we see the environmental uh, change as part of the cost of the project. We look at the impact of the project on, for example, things such as health of the stakeholders, because we also see that as a cost that project had. So not only money, not only time, but also those things are taken into into consideration. And uh, before I move forward with uh, with uh, with the material I'm showing you, um, there's one thing uh, that you don't see on this presentation, but you will find very useful once you download the uh, the standard, is that there is a, an appendix in it. It's called Appendix A, and I strongly encourage you to go to that appendix when you download the standard. Because for each and every of the criteria I've shown you, uh, you will find ben benchmarking behaviors that we have seen in the projects uh, that participated in Global Project Excellence Award for the last 17 years. And we distilled that into something that you can use to compare your organization or your project to. So uh, for each and every bullet point that you see here on this slide or on the previous slides, you'll find even a few dozens of practices 
that we have seen in real life projects. And um, I want to emphasize that this is not our wish. This is not an utopian pro uh, model that we thought it would be nice to achieve someday. This is something we built by looking at real projects that really happened, that really used those practices, that really had the benefit of using it. So we believe if you follow the uh, the same practices, uh, your your chances to succeed are are very good. If you're curious how the result of assessment looks like, we're we're having a multi-level scoring system in uh, in the uh, model. What you see on the left, the, the the numbers here, like 40, 30, 35, you get scores per individual sub-criteria. But also what you see on the right, like this 50, 43, 48, you see the aggregated scores per area. So you will get a separate score for people and purpose, separate score for processes and resources, and a separate one for results. Uh, actually, the toolkit we provide uh, also gives you a chance to visualize it, just like you see on the screenshot here on the right side of the slide. And actually, this is the kind of a, a summary report you will also get when you put yourself into assessment uh, as part of the awards program. And the nice thing about it is that you can really drill down into the model and see, okay, if you're curious, why did I get 50 here? You can see what it's composed from and uh, you can dig deeper up to the level of an individual criteria. And the report, if you have a written report, is structured exactly the same way so you can compare your score with the findings that we, that we had there. It's like a complete system that works together. What I wanted to show you now is the uh, sample profiles that we, we have and uh, also what you find in the model is interpretation of those profiles. So what you see now on the screen is is project where you have pretty decent uh, management of processes and resources and pretty decent results. I'm saying pretty decent because uh, the level of 50 points is the level of already by the book projects. What's beyond 50 is is really excellent and uh, is like a benchmark project. So here you see they are beyond excellent in resources and, uh, and processes and results. But you see people and purpose very low. And the model will never tell you it's good or bad. What the model will tell you is what are the risks if your profile looks like this. So for example, in this case, what you will find in, in Project Excellence Baseline, yeah, because actually this, this uh, profile is taken from the, the baseline, Mm, the baseline will comment on it. Okay, uh, you might deliver in a stable uh, industry. You might deliver very well, but you, what you will have a problem with is whenever, for example, you will occur uh, significant changes in your industry. So, and a major change comes if your people are not driven by uh, motivation, objectives. If there's no proper leadership in place, it will be very difficult to turn that big ship. Uh, that is now following the old path while the industry is taking the new one. On the contrary, if you have a profile like this one, where it's super people and objective driven, but the processes and resources are not on, on the same level, uh, what you might face is when you scale up your activities, you will face major challenges. So you might have trouble, for example, to, um, uh, to grow on the other markets. You might have trouble uh, serving larger initiatives. Why? Because uh, you, your project might be hero-based and actually your heroes might start to burn out. And uh, this kind of warnings you will find in the model. So just like I told you, we're not judging if it's good or bad. What we're just telling you is this is what we want to warn you about if, you're, if your profile looks like this. And of course, ideally, we're looking for something like that where all three areas are balanced so uh, the uh, people are led by the right leaders, they know what the project is about, they are supported by the right processes and they have sufficient resources to deliver. And at the end of the day, they do deliver. That's pretty much the, uh, the summary of the model. And uh, I hope you will uh, take your time to download it after this webinar and uh, read it once again for yourself, look into details. Just to remind you, uh, if you want to download the model, go to shop.ipma.world and select the section called Standards. You can download ITMA Project Excellence Baseline without any cost, and you can start working with it even tomorrow. So we strongly encourage you to do so. There are no strings attached, no fees, you can just start using it right away. And we'll be very happy to hear from you how you implemented that in your organization.
Uh, this is our website. It's www.awards.ipma.world. And this is our award office uh, or award project office email, award at IPMA World. We're waiting for you to uh, come with questions. We're waiting for you with uh, when you come with uh, the willingness to apply. We'll be more than happy to help you in any circumstances. So what we can do for you is to guide you through the whole process. What we can do for you, we can even organize a dedicated webinar for your team if you need uh, them to get more details. We can give you all the materials you need. Just contact us and we're at your service. We want to see your project on a stage. We want to leave that special day with you when you stay on a stage. And once again, we rem uh, remember your success. After this webinar, go to shop.ipma.world, download the Project Excellence Baseline and start using it internally because that tool is really going to change your projects and we encourage you to do so. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a fantastic weekend to come. And we hope to see you in the awards club. Thank you so much.